Ask yourself this, what if the Flintstones were real? And then ask yourself, why did ancient humans who possess the same brain size and mental capabilities as modern humans choose to reside exclusively in caves for thousands of years? What if they didn't choose to, but were forced to live underground for thousands of years as the only means to escape extreme surface temperatures that fluctuated close to 100 degrees in either direction, from extremely hot to extremely cold? Now, ask yourself, why are all the billionaires starting to build underground bunkers instead of their usual obsession with Mars? Do they know some hidden secret from the ancient past that we don't? What does Mark Zuckerberg know, and why is he building a $270 million compound in Hawaii that features a 5,000-square-foot underground bunker? This 1,400-acre compound is located on the northeast side of the Hawaiian island of Kauai, between the tourist hubs of Kapa and Hanalei. Once construction is completed, is 12 buildings, with 30 bedrooms and 30 bathrooms, where the two main residences are reportedly connected by a tunnel, which also leads to the underground bunker, which is guarded by a concrete-filled metal door that is blast-proof in case of a nuclear blast. The underground shelter is believed to be over 5,000 square feet and will have its own energy and food supplies, making it completely self-sustainable. It is rumored that the shelter will be equipped with state-of-the-art technology and advanced security systems to ensure the safety of Zuckerberg and anyone he invites down there when the time comes. The younger Dryas was approximately 12,900 to 11,700 years ago, when woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, mastodons, and saber-toothed tigers all went extinct. But the fully intact skeletal structures of these extinct animals can be found without the remains being fully decomposed or fossilized in massive graveyards all over places like Russia and America. I always was captivated by finding something on the ground or in the earth that told me a little bit about our culture and where we came from and what was here before us. Those cool things that we find need to be saved. They were flabbergasted to see how much material was found in just one day, 100 bones in a day. The secrets in these bones are held in a lot of different ways. I'm sure in your collection, you can easily make a composite skeleton of a stepper bison. You can make a whole goddamn herd of stepper bison. I think so. And that would be impressive. To yeah, it would. The bones which come out of the permafrost are bones which have been frozen since thousands of years. and. They looked like the animal was living yesterday. Mm. So the quality is super. Ah, here it is, look. Wow. One of the really big questions is, why do we have so many bones here? Oh, it's a huge one. Yeah. Wow. How that happened, over how much time did that occur? Very good question. That's something that we'd really like to figure out. Wow, that's a great specimen. And even a part of the horn sheet is attached. This is really a gold mine, but for bones. Yeah. Finding that many bones in that amount of time, yeah, it's not normal at all. Something wiped them all out instantly, and humans hid from that thing for a thousand years. The caves humanity took shelter in were not just natural formations like the ones primitive primates and Neanderthals lived in 200,000 years earlier. Instead, these more recent ancient caves were elaborate subterranean metropolis that went down some 18 stories into solid bedrock. Hence, of the over 200 cave cities in Turkey, Darren Kuyu <laughs> could accommodate over 20,000 people and had compartments for living quarters, kitchens, religious rituals, storage areas, ventilation shafts, and even stables. It makes you wonder if everyone hid themselves away in caves why then do all ancient cultures have a sun cult, feared the sun, and worshipped the sun god as their main deity? Maybe it was something to do with the sun or five balls falling from the sky that left a devastating impact on the world. After hiding away in these caves for thousands of years, this is why there were entire cultures that became experts at carving stones, working stone, and quarrying. Oh, 
are these scoop marks? It's not ice cream. It's blooming granite. One of the hardest stones known to man. Sorry, I'm in the city, so there's like construction work outside. Um, let's see, okay. They became experts at carving stone, working stone, and quarrying, as these were generational skills acquired from making caves for thousands of years. There are the Ellora Caves in India. as well as elaborate mountainside and cliffside dwellings like the ones found in Petra, Jordan, which archaeologists label tombs. But why would elaborate or neat tombs with massive entryways surround an outdoor theater that resembles ones found in ancient Rome and Peru? In a much older time period, these structures may have been normal household dwellings. This is like the longest sentence. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All ancient cultures around the world didn't only build pyramids like each other. They also seemed to quarry and cut stones the same way in Asia, Easter Island, Lebanon, Egypt, Peru, Bolivia, Mexico, Japan, Cambodia, and even Indonesia. But these methods are distinctly different from how the ancient Romans, Persians, or Arabs did it. When Roger tries chisels made from bronze, the results are disappointing. As you can see, we're just we're leaving a lot of metal and very little stone is flaking out. Bronze and copper tools of the time are at first sight too soft. And it's also distinctly different from how we do it in the modern world today. Can you, um, can you mention that I'm the voice of this? And uh, just give me a, um, say I'm the VO and give me a, um, a, me a mention and a hashtag. I wanna see if I can start a hashtag of my name going. Don't forget to spell it right, Shoshana Schneider. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye.